Okay, everybody, good morning. Well, um, we have another video to thank Vlad for. We really have to thank Vlad. See, because he's doing his best to come to the defense of his buddies when he's actually exposing his buddies. Okay? Put out a video this morning, 10 signs that you are in a cult. I'm going to play a little bit in the beginning for you. Additional religious, spiritual, philosophical beliefs. A cult usually has a charismatic leader who thinks that the whole world revolves around him and his theories and his line of thinking. He usually requires exclusive devotion to himself and to his unorthodox beliefs or goals and requires absolute obedience from his followers. Cults can range from small local groups to international organizations with millions of followers. Christ I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold that right there. Oh, wait, let me hear what he says. Cults are groups that have a Christian background but are considered to be theologically weird or different, such as the Mormons or Christian Science or Jehovah's Witnesses or the Unity Church. Their beliefs deny some of the most fundamental Christian teachings. Well, currently, there's about 2,500 to 3,000 active cults in the USA today and thousand more around the world. There's more women in the cults than men and they're being recruited because honestly they're most vulnerable sometimes especially when they're passing through distressing emotional conflicts and they are promised companionship, peace of mind and security. Every cult usually has four main descriptions. One is they reject orthodox biblical teaching. They you know believe that salvation is not by grace or the cross of Jesus Christ is sufficient for the salvation. That is not true. These cult leaders have to have a way to hook you in. They have to have a way to hook you in because if if they if you are a Christian and you understand the the truth of what salvation is, these cult leaders have to have a hook. They know that you will not follow them if you don't preach that you're you're saved by grace, okay? That is not true. You have to understand cult leaders work by psychological abuse. This really has nothing to do with God or religion or spirituality. This is all about the devil. This is all about the world. This is all about their ego. And all they really want is name and fame, money and sex and power. Now, if you've, if you've heard everything I just described, these are all of the things I've been saying to Mike Signorelli. He's out here saying he wants the Billy Graham Stadium. He's out here preaching the prosperity gospel, which is a false doctrine, but yet he also preaches the truth about salvation. He's also constantly putting down Catholicism and the mystics community. Only what he's doing is the right way. Only what he's doing is the right way. To the point where he'd actually say that Jesus wasn't poor. Jesus was the, the purse holder. I want to I want to play you just a small little bit from his Sunday service. The one that I've, I've, I've put in my description several times already this just this one sunday sermon because he literally thought he was attacking me no he was exposing himself because these people's ego are so huge all they care about is stomping on anyone who goes up against them that's all he cares about no but if christ be lifted up he will draw all men unto him and see, this is about raising up spiritual sons and spiritual daughters that do greater things. And so I was in Pacific Standard Time, literally in Washington State, watching them preach. And I was bawling my eyes out. And I was saying, my, 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 the anointing that's coming out of Evan, that's coming out of Patrick, that's coming out of Eddie. I mean, it was, it was just, but it, for me, I was just like a proud papa saying what we're doing is bigger than the, the part that we play. And we're a part of something bigger than the part we play. He is the leader. This is his family structure that his people, these are his words, his people call him 
Papa Sigs. He's the daddy of his organization. He also has, in this very video, he speaks to his wife, Jules. We're going to get to Jules in a minute. Um, he asks her about the little girl who is not their child. This is just a little girl that goes to their church. She says, my dad is doing uh, revivaling. My dad, this is not normal. This is not normal behavior. This is cult behavior. This is a way of grooming, especially young children, that they grow up looking up to this person as God himself because they're seeing all of these signs and wonders coming from this person and they're literally being taught to submit themselves to this man, not to God, to this man. And they're literally calling him dad. So here he is talking about three pastors who filled in for him while he was on tour. The tour, by the way, that he was out here, that I brought to everybody's attention, he was out here begging people for money to send him on a world tour to promote his book. This is all abnormal stuff. Let's hear what else Vlad says. All our sins, it's good works. Usually it's based on good works. Something along the line that it rejects Jesus' atoning work on the cross. Uh, the second category is that leaders are usually lords. They isolate their followers and they penalize them for wanting to leave the group. And pretty much leaders act like lords instead of servants. The third category is that the cult usually is ran. Leaders act like lords instead of servants. As, he's, as he just said, he was so proud of grown men, they are pastors, grown men that filled in for him. Instead of simply thanking them for a job well done, no, he's so proud like the proud papa. He is the lord over these people. He is the dad of the house. Okay? This is the dysfunction that's going on. And I want you to understand. Uh, I'm not going to get ahead of myself. Like a cartel, meaning it requires absolute loyalty to its leaders and punishing those who decide to leave. And the fourth category. I told you in this exact video, you will see it on this video. Let me see if I can actually find it for you. I know it was towards the end. The psychological is produced through open conversations. Right now, the deconstructing church is saying, I just want to have an open conversation. But this... <laughs> I don't care if V1 church gets judged. My judge... It's not the pastor in the regions where we have campuses who are offended that we're still doing the work of Jesus. My master is Jesus. And I'd rather be, uh, I'd rather fulfill the assignment of my master Jesus and be rejected by infrastructure than to be accepted by it today and find out it was a replication of Pharisee and Sadducee. He is the called mighty righteous one doing God's work out here. And People who are calling him to task, saying that he's out of line for his behavior, he's, he's, he's uh, bucking up against, and he's saying that, that they're Pharisees, and they don't understand his calling. They're not called by the Lord to the level that, that Mike Signorelli is, so they don't understand. I'm here to tell I'm ripping nests out of my tree. Because we are going to be faith-based thinking and we are going to be biblical-based. Matter of fact, this ain't even about V1 Church. It's about the kingdom coming to the earth. And this thing's got to be about the kingdom. Matthew chapter 6 verse 30 said, Go to the person and confront them directly and have the crucial conversation. If it's easier for you to talk about that person than talk with that person. Psalm chapter 105. That You're going to have to listen for it yourself. What he says in here is, He's not going to ever give up his dream of being Billy Graham in the stadium. Um, he said something else. Or having a lot of money because he was not called to be uh, poor. Um, and if you don't like it, if you want to call him a prosperity preacher, you could leave his church right now. 
So what is he actually saying there? He's right now guilting every member of that church for having an opinion. He's guilting every member of that church for having an opinion. For seeing the things that he's doing that are not right and they know it's not right. Who is that small inner voice that tells you something is wrong? That is the Holy Spirit. That is the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit was trying to warn me to get away from Nithya Nanda, but I was in the middle of a massive nervous breakdown and benzo withdrawal syndrome. And, I, and because I was so abused my whole life, I learned to shut down the Holy Spirit when he was trying to talk to me. And I ignored that inner voice. See, these people at this church, and you can hear it throughout this guy's sermons. There was another sermon that he did where he was telling one of the stories of the Bible. And uh, there was a, a woman there that was the wife of somebody who did something. And he said, man, this woman was hot. This is one of the things you're going to have Vlad say. That they, they, they make sex normal they normalize sex so what happened when he said that woman was hot people must have gave him some kind of weird look in the in the church he turned around and says oh come on guys i'm just being real once again bringing down their critical thinking shaming them shaming them for actually understanding that something was not right with what he just said shaming them so that they stop critical thinking and that's what he says oh come on guys i'm just being real he and his wife are talking about their sex life uh they're talking about um their relationship their marriage all of this stuff now this is not stuff that is spoken about in the Bible. It is not stuff that is spoken about in the church. This is another kind of doctrine that they have brought into the church to normalize sex here. To normalize the talk of sex in the church. This is what is happening. So you no longer get uncomfortable with the discussion of sex. It's now normalized. And here he is bringing his wife in on it. Why is that important? Because every cult, every cult has a female mother figure. Every cult has a female mother figure. You have the leader, which everyone sees as the father figure of the family. And you have a female leader, which is the mother figure. The mother figure comes off as being very kind and loving. And you can go to her and talk to her about anything. Okay? Okay. And she reports back to the leader about everything that happens, about every person that speaks out against him. She is the one reporting to him about everything. She was the one who stood on that church and said to me, she's also a covert narc. She is the one who said uh, uh, to me that if I need to vent about something, I, need, I should go to a therapist. To defend her abusive husband who was out here brutally attacking me. And also understand I said several times it was Mike Signorelli who started all of this. Because I corrected him in public. You don't correct these people. They will attack you. He's also the one who made the statement in one of his videos. You guys are going to have to go and look for these things because I'm tired of digging for this stuff. He, he's also one of the people that, uh, the one that made the statement that he's getting so powerful now that he can deliver people in a mass deliverance all by himself now. He was so powerful now that he can deliver people in a mass deliverance all by himself now. He doesn't need any of these other Deliverance ministers to deliver people in a mass deliverance. It's all about him. The is that the moral and legal issues are usually crossed. They consider themselves above the law. There's no financial transparency, nor oversight, 
or accountability to anyone. So you may listen to that. Look, man, when I go to a Christian church and, you know, we believe in the gospel, we believe in, in Jesus, but it, it is, there's some weird practices. Like, how would I know if I am in a cult or not? In Galatians chapter 1, verse 6 and verse 7, Paul says, I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel, which is not another. But there are some who trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. Now, I'm going to share with you 10. This prosperity gospel is a perversion of the gospel. This guy literally had some speaker come into his church for three or four Sundays in a row talking about your finances. This is not the place of any church to do a teaching like this when the gospel should have been preached. What they did, how they perverted it, was they tied it all back to the gospel. That exactly what he said, that Jesus wants you to be abundant so that your abundance can bless others. They're, they're, they're leaving out the fact that first you must transcend the world so that you have no attachment to money, that you have lost your attachment to greed, that you have lost your attachment to lust, and that you truly do know God and that you have turned away from your sin. And then you are able to bless other people. But for three or four weeks, he had this guy in there talking about money and how all of the people that were there should be giving to the church that God will give them. It is the prosperity gospel. This is what he was preaching there. It is a perversion of the truth. This is only one of the things he's, he's perverted. Uh, he truly feels that, that, that he is so superior and special to everybody. This is also the guy who went out You'll hear Vlad say that they will attack people who leave them. He actually went out and told these pastors and the people in his church who were seeing my videos, he told them all that I used to be a member of his church and I left the wrong way. I was never a member of his church. I was never a member of his church. I signed up with all of these demon slayers because once I learned about these demons and saw that I was being delivered of these demons, it was all I could think of how I wanted to help people get free of these demons. So I signed up to every one of their pages that so I would be notified when they came on. I was binge watching all of their videos. Um, even for Vlad's church, I even went to one of his small groups because I did want to connect with Christians. But he, Signorelli went out and told people that I was a member of his church and I left the wrong way, which is an outright lie. That was a smear campaign so that people would not listen to what I was saying. Okay? Nithyananda is doing the exact same thing to me. Signs that could indicate that you are probably in the occult, not in the church now it's easy to take any of them out of context and simply stick it to your pastor or to your church at you know maybe they're going through some stuff or made some mistakes and that's not my desire my desire is not to make everybody feel like they are in the cult but if you are in the cult I want to help you to realize that and also give you at the end some practical things you can do to get out and get out today number one is a leader is the ultimate authority you're not allowed to question criticize your leader even if he is wrong the leader has the charisma and he claims supreme knowledge and he's the dad of the church and he cannot treat his his pastors that are underneath him as grown men who are walking their own walk in Christ no he treats them as as they're his children they're his spiritual children and he treats them like they are little children and not grown men who deserve respect in and of their own right. He's the proud papa. It fosters an emotional connection to the abuser so that these people will look up to him. Then, if he ever gets angry at these people, he will say he's doing it because he loves them. He will speak to them like they're garbage instead of speaking to them like they're adults. And he will tell them 
He's correcting them like that because he loves them. This is how he wears them down psychologically and emotionally and wears down your critical thinking skills. And it happens very slowly over time. You don't even realize what's happening to you. But like he said, if you want to see me as a prosperity preacher, leave my church. It's his way or the highway. You're not allowed to have your own opinion. Considers himself to be always right. The members have to forfeit their critical thinking in order to belong. A leader convinces his followers he is divinely directed and all other religions are false and he is the only one that's right. His objective is to choke out your individual identity through gradual and incremental sessions of indoctrination for total mind control of all his followers. Yes. Sensing that yes, that's exactly what he's doing. That's exactly what he's doing. As you have heard him speak horribly against Catholic and Catholicism um, and, and also the mystics community. Horribly. He's the authority and he knows absolutely nothing. He's the authority who knows absolutely nothing. Okay? It's done incrementally. You have no idea that it's happening. The same thing happens with the gaslighting. And this is what he did that day when he spoke about that woman in the story in the Bible where he said she was hot. And people gave him a look like they knew that that was not right. And he said, oh, come on, guys. I'm just being real. That was gaslighting. That was gaslighting. How dare you? How dare you look to correct me? How dare you look to correct me? That's what it was. You will no longer ever say anything to him when he makes a snide remark about somebody's body. He does this in this video. Oh, I see some people lost weight. Some people gained weight. You will never say anything to him anymore because he's done it enough times so that you will allow him now to do whatever he wants and say whatever he wants because he is the leader of that church. You have now built... A soul tie with this guy. You have now built a soul tie with this guy. You see him as your spiritual father. You have now put aside all of your critical thinking skills. Which is why you put up with his nonsense. Which is why you put up with him calling, whether it's an anointed being or any being, a witch from the stage of his church. You all have put up with it. Because he has taught you to never question him. Ever. That's a sign number one. Sign number two is the group suppresses skepticism and forbids criticism. <laughs> there Members you go. Are forbidden to read any outside material. Cult leaders utilize manipulative mind control over their members. They maintain spiritual purity of all the members to avoid contact and conversation with outside persons in order to achieve spiritual harmony within. What he has said now is that. He is so called. He's going to do God's work. And anyone outside who criticizes him are considered Pharisees and Sadducees. Anyone who wants to live as God commanded you to live, to flow through these spiritual powers, you will be the pure people who will follow him. Because he is the called one. He is the anointed one that the Holy Spirit flows through. He's literally said these words. In this one video, this is how important this video is. And you have seen it three or four times already. Did you catch all of this information from this one video here? No, you probably did not. Well, this is what I have been seeing out here in these people. Daniel Adams is the same exact thing. He's so anointed that anyone who talks up against him, God will hurt. He's the same exact way. If he had his own church, he would absolutely be a cult leader in no time flat. And that's a cult. The third sign is the group bashes former members. The group members must shun defectors in order to prevent from being infected with so-called truth. To lead them. Saying that I was a member of his church and I left in a bad way. So this is why I'm speaking out against him. Okay, this is they all have the same behavior. You guys have to understand they all have the same behavior. 
And the other thing that, that I have been saying over and over, they've been attacking me for a year. Why don't they just be on their merry way? Why don't they just go and teach their own churches? Why are they still following what I say on my page? Why? Why? A cult would result in eternal damnation and spiritual suicide. The members are encouraged to tell on anyone who has negative thoughts and doubts concerning the group. That's a sign that it's a cult. The fourth sign is the group is paranoid about the outside world. They promote theories about the end of the world and deliverance from this evil world, which is intent on their destruction. Their charismatic leader, he fosters his theories and his ideological system to transcend the imperfections of life on the outside. Pretty much, it's a very inside focus. The world is evil. Everybody's bad except... As you just heard him say in this video... Anyone who speaks out against him is a Pharisee or a Sadducee because he is the highly anointed one. Okay? Our little group. The fifth sign is the group relies on shame tactics to maintain conformity. Leader imposes strict codes of conduct, guilting members for their shortcomings. They are made to... Don't you ever, don't you ever question him. Don't you ever question him. When the people in the, in, the, in the church looked at him sideways when he said that woman was hot, what did he do? Oh, come on, guys. I'm just speaking the truth. Don't you ever question him. Well, now he doesn't get questioned any longer. Unworthy of love and acceptance unless they conform to the rules and confess any shortcomings. The sixth sign is the leader considers himself above moral standards. This idea allows the leader to exploit the members economically and sexually without any consequences. Sexual grooming is very common and members usually ignore or justify their leader's immoral behavior because, well, he's above the moral standards. The seventh sign is the leader uses constant... So he can talk about that woman from the Bible being hot... And then you look at him sideways and he condemns you for looking at him sideways. He can speak about his and his wife's sex life in the church. And um, this, is, this is a whole other side doctrine that would never be spoken about in church. Uh, the Bible teaches against fornication and sexual immorality. Uh, if he wanted to be a relationship coach and a sex coach, that, sh that should be done as a side job or... He should have got, gone into counseling, not pastoring. So what is he doing? He's combining these two areas so that the speaking about sex becomes normalized to you. This is a grooming technique. This is a grooming technique. Okay? There is a reason why these things were kept out of church. Sex, speaking about sex, what you speak about is what you think about. Speaking about sex does not belong in the church. The only thing that belongs in the church is to speak against sexual immorality. Lecturing, obsessive praying, and lack of sleep to maintain people's minds in constant weird state. They keep devotees or these followers constantly fatigued and deprived of sensory input. The group uses thought reform methods to correct each other. Brainwashing is often used to break down person's sense of individual identity. Short cliches such as follow your leader, doubt your doubts, are constantly used so that followers don't... He's the dad. He's the dad. This is why I was so against what I was hearing. He's the dad. Call him Papa Sigs. Call him Papa Sigs. There is no line there. There is no boundary there. Okay? The boundaries have been wiped away. And he's going to walk all in your space. You're not going to have any individuality anymore. Like these pastors who filled in for him. They were not grown men. Pastors in their own right. Who did a wonderful job for him. They were his little children. His little spiritual children. And Papa Siggs is so proud of them. and analyze complex issues. Eighth sign is the group is elitist, meaning 
They see themselves as selected, enlightened ones, given the task of transforming the world. This creates a sense of greater unity and purpose. Members are required to cut all relationships with family, friends, and other contexts who do not agree with the teachings of the cult leader. Son. You hear him constantly talk about your friends are saying, oh, you go to that church that does this. Your family will say, oh, you go to that church that does that. That, that does all these signs. You hear him say this all the time. He's slowly breaking you away from your friends and family. This is exactly what's happening. This is exactly what's happening. Number nine is there is no financial transparency. Members are required to make great financial sacrifices, but they are not allowed to know where their money goes. I don't, I can't say that. I don't know if he... If he gives a report of where his money goes, I would I would not believe that that he is transparent about anything. And you are in the cult. The group performs secret rites, and usually you discover these after you become a member. And these are to solidify members' loyalty to the group. Now maybe you find yourself in the occult. What do you do? So, once again. As I've told you many, many times, these pastors out here who freely attack anybody they want, they will look to the occult, they will look to mysticism to say those people, when in fact, you should be looking in your own churches. As God said, he wants his church to come together, and he said he was starting to clean out his church, he was starting to pull out the weeds. This is why these people are being exposed. So these are all the red flags that I have seen about these people. I don't know enough about Vlad to say anything. Um, what I can say is Vlad has a lot of programs there for the community. It does not appear that, that he's doing these things. Signorelli is another story. He is a massive red flag. He is a massive red flag. So, he's got other people's children calling him dad. All you have to do is watch any of these cult documentaries and see what's happening here. This is a terrible thing waiting to happen. And he told you people, if you wanted to see him as a prosperity preacher, because that is exactly what he is. Uh, leave. And I would suggest every single one of you leave. He's a cult leader. And he's pulled his wife in to be the mother aspect of the family. Okay? No, none of this, none of this is copacetic. None of this is copacetic. There must be boundaries between your life and the leaders of your church. There must be boundaries, healthy boundaries. You can look to your leader of your church as your pastor, as your spiritual guide. Uh, that's all they are. Jesus, the, the Trinity, is the only spiritual father that we have. You are to idolize no man on this earth. No man on this earth. And when you are being taught false doctrine over and over again, that is a huge red flag, and you should be hauling it right about now. Anytime you see anyone from their church calling anybody a witch, you should be hauling it because that is not coming from God. That is massive ego. Anytime you see people telling you to send in thousands of dollars, send me in ten thousands of dollars, you should be hauling it. Anytime you see somebody riding around in a private plane while the people following them are dirt poor, you should be hauling it. You should be hauling it. These are the signs of a cult leader. I was in a cult. These Nithian and the goons are still stalking me and harassing me. This is what happens. They are hacked into everything I own, my cell phones, my computers. They have just caused me to lose my job. You need to leave. 
you need to leave. This is psychological warfare. They don't care anything about you. It's all about them. You need to leave. It's all about power, sex, and money. This is all this is about. So when you heard those words, I will never stop wanting to be Billy Graham in a stadium. And if you want to call me a prosperity preacher, then you can just leave. You should have packed your bags right at that moment. The fact that he cannot just plainly thank the pastors that filled into him with the utmost respect and not uh, speak condescending to these people as if they're little children. I'm so proud of them. I'm so, so proud of them because he's, he's the dad figure of the cult. Now, these are grown men who are pastors in their own right who deserve to be spoken to as a grown man. There's something very, very, very horrible happening here. So I want you to understand that Vlad was not correct. A Christian cult leader will absolutely be teaching you the salvation that, that Jesus died on the cross and you don't have to do any work because they have to have a hook to get you in. And then the false doctrines start coming in. The prosperity doctrines start coming in. Send all your money to him. Send all your money to him. This is why I've been speaking out about this stuff. Because I have lived through it and I can see what I can see. And you all need, and you, this is why they've been attacking me. This is why they've been attacking me. Do you understand? But this is why they have not been successful. Because the Holy Spirit really is here. You guys have a blessed day. And I hope you all stay safe. I will put both of these videos in the description. And I would encourage every single one of you to listen to this Signorelli video again. <coughs> and hear it with Vlad's video going. So although he was trying to counter what I said that Signorelli was a cult leader, he proved it. That's all there is to it. <laughs>